Hi, welcome to Monterey's Cooking. I'm John Pisto, and here is my friend Ivan Pung. And boy, do I have a beautiful show. You know, folks, you know how I feel about mushrooms. I'm a real mushroom nut. And Ivan has been so nice to let us come and show you how mushrooms are grown. We're going to show you how these magnificent shiitake mushrooms are grown from start to harvest to finishing cooking them at home. Okay, Ivan, thank, thank you so much for letting us come here. You're really, welcome. Really appreciate it. You're I know welcome. you're a busy man. You got all the, these things to do, but uh, I think the people will absolutely be fascinated with how you grow mushrooms. Okay? okay. The name of this company, by the way, is San Juan Batista Mushroom Farm. All right. Now, Ivan, step one. What do you do? Well, the first one we use in sawdust. This kind of sawdust is special sawdust, mostly oak, maple, or elders sawdust. Okay. And that's all hardwood. So it has to have a hardwood sawdust. It has to be oak, maple, or elder only. Yes. Very interesting. Okay, that's step number one. Let's go see step number two. Okay, okay Ivan, next step is what do you do now? You next, this step, for second step, the sawdust, we, for some nutrition, mostly it's rice bread. Rice bread. And uh, with uh, uh, pH control, uh -huh. those are hydrated calcium. Okay. okay. To right. mix up with... Uh, okay, then you turn on the power. This is a machine. The nutrition and the sawdust, mm -hmm. mix up together. Okay. And then after mix well, and then we swear to the conveyor machine. I'll be darn. Uh -huh. Beautiful. So from the conveyor belt, we're leaving the mixing machine, and it goes into this conveyor belt, and then goes on. Okay. And then step three. Okay, so now I have, and it looks like you're going, these are being filled up, correct? Yes. Okay, these are being full. Now, at this point, these are called blocks. Yes. Okay. And this is step three. And then you have to keep filling this, otherwise you have a bigger mess. <laughs> you have sawdust all over the place. Wow. Okay, that's step three. Let's go on to step four. Okay, now Ivan, this is step four. This is a, a steam room, correct? Yes. Okay, it goes in there. That's why it kills all the, uh, kills all the germs and yes. sterilizes everything. Yes. That's very interesting. Okay. Let's go on to step five. Okay, Ivan, we've left the steam room. We're over here now. So tell me what happens from, from in this room. Yeah, after the block sterilized, we put mushroom spawns mm -hmm. inside the block, let the mycelium grow in mm -hmm. this room with temperature control mm -hmm. for three months about. Okay, so what, what we're doing here is we're growing the mycelium. The mycelium is the tree. Basically, to make you in simple language, it's the tree. So then what we're going to do is produce the fruit. All right, let's go see the fruit now. <laughs> Boy, can you believe this? I mean, just look at this. Ivan, this is the final step, correct? Yes. And, and how old are these mushrooms? Uh, the mushroom is not old. Mm -hmm. It's only a few days. Oh, really? It just come up. Gee, yeah. look at that. About from the beginning, the fruiting like this, yes. smaller, from, mm -hmm. a small size, and then until mature to open up for harvest, it is about five days. Five days from here to mm. this point. My mm. God, that this is mushroom heaven, folks. And people that love shiitake mushrooms like I do, I mean, this is called paradise. This is just incredible. Okay, so after this, let's go on to the next step. Okay. Okay, so Ivan, now everything's been harvested. It comes here, and from here you ship. Oh, let's see what you got here. Oh, these are oyster mushrooms. Now, these are also oyster mushrooms. Yes. Okay, these are growing. He also grows oysters uh, um, besides the shiitake. Now, he has three sizes, the large, the medium, and the small. And I tell you, folks, these, I've never seen better looking mushrooms. You are a very good mushroom farmer, Ivan. Thank you. You do a beautiful job. And... Uh, I can't wait to take these home, and we're gonna cook these. I'm gonna make these a couple of ways. I, I'm very excited. This, I hope you enjoyed this segment of the program. This was a good one. Ivan, 
Thank you very, very, very much. You've been Thank a very you. nice gentleman. You're welcome. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. All right. Let's go home and eat. Well, we want to thank Ivan again for helping us um, and, and being so real nice and courteous and showing us around. Uh, he has a very busy day there. Um, I want to show you the easiest way I've ever seen to do shiitake mushrooms. If you really want to taste the flavor, you'd be amazed. Now, this has got to be the easiest way in the world. And we did these over David Aurora's house. You remember him? He's the man that's got that book out. He's the mushroom guru, our friend. And he did this in a pizza oven that was about 600 degrees, but I'm gonna grill these. Oh, make sure your grill's hot. There's our stovetop grill. If you got a real hot oven, it would work too. And we just sat around the fire outside and uh, just did a bunch of these up like this and just kept doing them. And I tell you, it was just delicious. I mean, we're all, everyone said, my God, it's the easiest way and maybe the, one of the best. Okay, and then just put some of that oil on top like that and a little bit of salt. And that's all to it. And this will cook. And I'll tell you why it'll cook. Why I know that, because I cooked one before we went on. And it came out exactly like the fire. This will give all those flavors. Let's put a little bit of pepper in here too. Make sure you get a little bit of the oil inside. Now shiitake is usually, I see it used mostly with uh, meat, but today I'm gonna do it with fish because why not? I know it's a real nice hearty mushroom. While these are cooking, let's bring our fish out. Now we went down the market and this is what I got. Now you know what these are? These are called sand dabs, okay? These are probably one of the best eating fish there are. Now these are the fillets. Okay, we serve these. Let me show you. If you ever go fishing for these, uh, out of, you catch these out on the bay. They're very easy to catch. In fact, you don't even have to use bait sometimes because there's so, there's so many of them out there. there at, at times, you tie a piece of cl white cloth on there, drop that down. We'd always add about eight hooks, nine hooks, and just lay it on the bottom. You have to be in, I know summertime is when you really get them. And uh, I mean, you'd, get eight at a time. And I'll tell you, sand dabs are, whoa, are uh, one of the best fish there is to eat off, to eat off Monterey Bay. You see them in a restaurant, try them. I like them, personally I like them with the bone on, um, with the bone in them. Let's stick with this for a while here, This is because these are almost done. See how fast that cooks? And then I'm gonna serve them straight up. And that's what we did Talking about mushrooms and eating whole uh, shiitake. And you know, we were up in the Sierras recently with David and we're hunting for morels. And one of the best ways to eat the fresh morel was to barbecue it. And it was, just came out delicious. Now, if you ever are lucky enough to get any morels, make sure you cook them. They have to be cooked because uh, raw, they are poisonous. Okay, always have them cooked. Okay, this is cooked, folks. Uh, you pull that out. Look at this. Barbecued shiitake mushrooms. Fresh from San Juan Batista. Now, you know what the Italians would do with this now? They would squeeze a little bit of lemon on it. You know what? 
you got yourself something very delicious. Barbecued mushrooms. Huh? Beautiful, isn't it? Okay, next we're gonna do, we're gonna continue with this. Okay, let me show you how to clean these. I don't know if you'd ever, would you ever clean these? I don't know, let me show you anyway. Take the scales off. Very important to take the scale off. Okay, see the little, has that little scale in there. Scale them real good with the knife and get them off because you know these are one fish, you can eat the skin and all. Okay, do that. All right. Now I would imagine if you get these, you would already have them done. Okay, and then when you cut, you cut right there and you pull the gut out, see? And you wanna leave, whoop, well, you wanted to leave that, but we lost it. Okay, that, uh, that ought to get your appetite going. <laughs> okay, let's rinse these off. Okay, let me get my, okay, we got this going. Okay, let me rinse this. Okay, this is how you clean these. You see, I'm going right in like that and like that. And I'm taking that bone, because there's bones all along the side, okay? And I'll show you why I'm doing this. Because I'm going to cook the other one. Now, if you don't want to do this, you see how that comes out? And what happens is all this, these are all full of bones. And what I've done is taken the bone out. See, that's pan ready now. I'm going to cook one like this too, just to show you what that's like. When we come back, I'm going to show you how to cook this. Okay, what I've done was got the mushroom and take the stem. Shiitake stems are very, very tough. So what you would do would be save them, use them for stock. Now, these are a real hardy mushroom. And what we're gonna do is slice them real thin. And I'm gonna cook these rather quickly. And get the pan nice and hot. Straight olive oil. All right, that's good. Let's use some of those. And I tell you, I gotta, I gotta taste one of these folks, sorry. Mmm. See that? Very good. Has a nice little smoky flavor. Delicious. I mean, really delicious. So shiitake, you know, love affair with mushrooms. That's what I got. I love mushrooms, all varieties. I think maybe the best mushroom right now is that candy cap. That is sure a beauty. Smells up the whole house when you cook with it. I, I was up in Chinatown recently and I, I bought some mushrooms and I'm gonna do a show with it. That these mushrooms, when you cook them, they look like lace that just floats. And it has this incredible flavor that tastes like, I don't know, lemons and just so exotic. I uh, can't wait to show you. And um, so I've just been experimenting with all kinds of things. Nice stuff happening with mushrooms. People are starting to appreciate them more and more and more. Okay, let's save this for the other recipe. Okay, these soak up a little oil, so. A little parsley. I'm gonna add, of course, some garlic. And just chop it up like that. And I've got my, see the beautiful pan I've got from France? I found this in an antique shop here in Monterey. Look at that, this is specially made for, for frying fish. 
Dover sole, actually. Isn't that gorgeous? Put the whole fish in there and you flip it over. I mean, this was a real find. People didn't know what it was, I guess. But, uh, okay, then we're going to put some leeks in there. And I'm going to cut the leeks in strips like that and just throw it in. This is going to be a natural, natural, natural accompaniment. I'm going to make a nice little sauce with, for this. Okay. Okay, while this is cooking, what I'll do now is we'll get the fish going. Let me give this a little bit more. Give it a little salt, a little pepper, and let's put some lemon juice in here. Good shot of lemon juice. Yeah, it looks good, looks good. Okay, let's just let that cook. I gotta remember, these are not malleable handles. Malleable handle means that when it's hot, you can still touch it. Okay, butter and oil will go into the fish because we want to season that real good. We want that to be, we want the flavor of the butter in there. Okay. And where'd my fish go? Here they are. Now I rinsed these off, so I gotta put the salt back into it, folks. And this is seasoned flour. Now this is the one with the, the outer part. And here's the one without the outer part. Okay, hot oil, hot pan. Very easy. Now the secret to these fish is to make sure you let it crust, crust up. Because if you don't, when you go to turn it, the fish is gonna stick on the bottom of the pan. You're gonna leave half of it there. The easy way to do it is get a non-stick pan. <laughs> okay, white wine. That's yeah, looking good. That's looking good. And let me get this out of the way. Okay, we need a spatula to turn. And I'll use this one. Okay, see how nice that's cooking? Keep shaking your pan if you're using steel. That'll make sure that it keeps sliding. There's nothing worse than fish that's half of it's in the frying pan. Ever happened to you? It's happened to all of us, including me. Okay. See, we'll let that get nice and brown. Okay. Okay, let's flip this over, shake it. Remember what I said? Got to shake it. You don't shake it. Okay, flip it over nicely. See how beautiful that looks? Uh-oh, you see what happened on that one? Got to keep that pan moving. Okay, when we come back, we'll put this together. Okay, that's done. We'll pull the fish out. Flip it over. Now, remember I told you? Let me get that out of the way. Now, let, let me show you here. You see what you got? You got all these bones. So, if you know how to clean, you know, you got to know the, the anatomy of the fish. If you know it's there, you can clean them all out. After. Okay. Then all you have now is maybe a few bones. And what I tell my waiters when we do sand dabs like this or a whole fish, 
I tell the customers, for every bone you find, the waiter will give you a dollar. So guess how many bones we have in our fish, folks? <laughs> okay. Okay, that's just ready to go. And now we're gonna put, let's put a little bit of this here. And maybe a little of this here. And I wanted to make a fast sauce with that. Let me get this guy out of here. Okay, we want all that dripping in there, that's fine. Get the heat going. This is called saute manure. I'll make a manure sauce. The manure sauce is nothing more than a, a brown butter sauce. And it needs lemon. And it needs some parsley. And I'm going speed record. And you gotta have the parsley in there. And the lemon. Okay, that's on hot. This is gonna be delicious. Okay, that butter's nice and brown. And you go just like this. You pour that right over the top and you have yourself a, a dish fit for a king. Look at that. That look nice? Okay, I hope you enjoyed these two dishes. They're very, very good. A little something different with the mushrooms. Some these I think are real neat. And that's a nice little combination. Something different. Hope you enjoy them.